Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and maybe you heard the news we had a bit of a flooding in the area. Don't worry, I'm safe and like my workshop also got spared. But it got me thinking, I had a lot of parts around for ages like these wireless transceiver modules. And I thought, in an emergency, could I make like some crude way to make myself known that somebody's still in here and like get help? What does it take to make that work? Let's find out by trying it out. Like most makers, I have a big pile of parts around. Uh, among these are these 433 megahertz uh, wireless modules, which are I don't know, like everybody buys them because they are super cheap and in the Americas you also get them in different frequencies. It all depends on the region where you are. I never use them. I use Wi-Fi modules and stuff nowadays. But in a pinch, could I use this to make like an audio transmitter so I could like call for help or get myself known? Let's find out if that's possible. Thanks to my massive hoarding problem, I have microphones and I have things like this. And basically I have the inputs and the outputs that I need. And I don't want to put the project into like a, a, an ugly box. I want it to look fancy. So I found this thing here, which is uh, a microphone and a speaker in one case. And this was used for taxi communication in the 70s or 80s, I think. It says made in West Germany over here, so it's quite old. So for an audio transmission project, we of course need a microphone, a speaker. I have a potentiometer here, so I can vary uh, the loudness. Uh, on and off switch, and this is the button that makes you go talk. So I want to also, of course, uh, make sure that I will only activate the sender when I'm sending stuff, and I only activate the receiver when I want to receive stuff. So I save on power and also uh, both would interfere because each one has its own antenna, so they would basically talk to itself and give a feedback loop, which I don't want. So uh, this switch has to be a pretty uh, special one. Of course, we also need an antenna, and 433 megahertz has a specific wavelength. And you can use simple dipole antennas or monopoles or whatever, like the simplest forms of antennas. And the length of the antenna is determined by that frequency. You can calculate that. I put the formula below because I can't remember that, of course, because I'm bad in math. Uh, anyway, for 433 megahertz, you would usually use like the half or the quarter of the wavelength. Uh, so the antenna won't get as big, but I would like to have like maximum coverage or whatever. So I use uh, 69.24 centimeters of an antenna, which is one wavelength. So this is quite long. I can't even fit that in frame. Oh, of course, I need two of those uh, because one for receiving, one for sending. And they get uh, connected with these BNC connectors. So the uh, cables inside don't act as antennas themselves. They are like shielded coaxial cable and the antenna starts exactly where it should start, on the outside. So much for the physical parts. Let's check out how they are interconnected in the schematic in KiCad. Welcome to my computer and KiCad. Usually we use this to make circuits for PCBs. But this time we're soldering that all together uh, in flying wire fashion, uh, old school style. So what we have here is basically, that's the whole schematic. These are the modules. I just represented them with some connectors. The antennas are shielded. So this is basically the shielded connector and then the antenna goes into the free air. So this point is actually the actual antenna. Just so you know, on one module, we have two data pins. These are basically interconnected in here, so it doesn't matter which one you use. You have ground and five volts. This is important. It uses five volts to receive. The other one has one data pin, ground and nine volts here. You can use up to 12 volts. The more voltage you use, the better the sending works, basically. Uh, I think five volts is the minimum for sending. Uh, 9 volts should work out better. 
And to get a stable voltage, of course, we use some caps. I use electrolytics in that case. And here, this switch does the magic. This is a representation of the little push button that we have in the device. This actually has two poles. Both of them switch from one output to another, like here. And this allows us to make sure that if it's in one position, like unpressed, it activates the receiver, this one. And if we press it down, it activates the sender. So they are never powered both at once. Things that have to be powered at once are the power LED, of course. Uh, we also have our uh, caps energized, so we have stable voltages. We have an uh, 7805 voltage regulator, so that brings out down the power from a 9 volt block down to 5 volts. And that also powers uh, the microphone and an amplifier chip. So the amplifier is basically just a little module. Uh, I bought this with the uh, sender and receiver modules like way back when I started and never used it for anything. So we also power that with 5 volts, put in the audio that we receive from the uh, one module into that. And on the other channel, it's a stereo amplifier. We get data that we send out and also amplify that. So we send it, put in the microphone and also the receiving end. And on the output, we go either to the speaker or to the sender module on the other end. Uh, the speaker is connected with a potentiometer so we can vary its output, but I doubt it will be very loud. And that is basically it. The really complicated part in this is knocking down the voltages and making sure only one of these modules is powered on at a time. And uh, we now have to house all of this in our little case and make antenna connectors for that that are only exposing the right amount of wire for it to be a monopole or dipole. Please correct me what it actually is. What is the antenna type that we built here? How is that really called? I can't squeeze all the parts in into the original case, so I had to like make it a little bit bigger. I have room for the BNC connectors for the antennas, and this here is just a 3D print made with Protopasta conductive PLA. So this is part of the shielding and is also connected to the rest of the metal case, so it's completely encased in shielding, basically. Uh, yeah, this gives me enough room for all the components I put inside and a 9 volt battery. So let's solder that up and hopefully this works. Oh, guess what? Doesn't work first try. Well, we have to do a second thing. So I can see on the oscilloscope that it emits something. And now I need uh, basically a second unit to uh, receive something. So I built the same thing a second time. Back to the soldering station. Uh, so we've soldered everything up. We have the antennas connected. And now when I uh, turn that on and push the button and speak to it, it should output all that stuff. Maybe we even have some interference in the microphone. <laughs> yeah, but I can only hear like little... Can you hear it? Only just some crackle noises. That's not audio. That's That sounds pretty digital. I hope you can hear that. <laughs> Whenever I press here, and the output changes. So there is a link between these. So it turns out those cheap wireless modules are only digitally active. So what they do is basically they send an on and off pulse over the air and the other one receives that. And then basically you would do like Morse code or <laughs> some other form of code, encode a message and decode a message made out of discrete on and off steps. So this is digital transmission. So if I just pump in my audio signal into that, it will basically be like approximated to some stuff. And I, I, I would need to, to encode it in some way and then decode it on the other way. And what we are now doing here is basically we're just feeding it in and feeding it out. That would work with some transmission methods, maybe with some other 
radio equipment, but not with those modules. What's the solution for that? Interesting thing, I'm putting now a sinus wave in here. 440 Hertz going into the sender module of this thing. And here's the receiver. And I'm putting my microphone close to this so you can hear the difference. You can see in the mirror how I'm pushing it. I think the triplets are an approximation of the sine wave. Let's change that over to a triangle wave. I also think I have some coupling from one antenna to the other. Even though the modules aren't activated all the time, I think there is some coupling going on between these antennas. Uh, here's the TTL. Um, no, these are all the modes we have. So it's they are transmitting, but uh, just digitally. So that's the clicking, and you would then need to convert the clicking back into sound. Let's investigate that practically. So I have hooked up one of my devices to a, a signal generator that basically gives it a TTL signal. So that is basically a square wave in some random frequency. I choose 433 Hertz not megahertz, hertz. Uh, so it's basically a multiple of that uh, carrier frequency. And we should be able to like hear that if I just pump that into the sender inside. I just use some alligator clips. So basically we're now having a valid signal that we can transmit. On the other end, whenever I send that with a push of a button, I can hear the changes. First, I hear like ambient noise that it is just picked up by the antenna. And then I get a different signal whenever I send. So there is clearly a wireless link between those two devices. So we know the linkage actually works. So that's great. Uh, but we also noticed that out of the signal that we would hear when we uh, just access the uh, signal generator, so that's an audible signal, you can hear that, um, it just turns into clicks. So why is that? That's because it basically is just pulses on this uh, wireless transmission and we then have to convert these pulses back into audio. You could do that with a low pass filter and an amplifier of course, we have an amplifier in here, otherwise you wouldn't hear anything. Um, but on the other hand, we have to encode that. And how do you do that? Interesting thing, if you change the waveform of the input, then you can hear a difference, but it's not a difference in like, uh, like the audible difference in between a sawtooth wave a square wave or a sine wave. If you uh, toggle through these different modes and send them over, you still get crackle. It's just a little bit different. And I think because that is the approximation of the duty cycle that uh, the other module tries to replicate is different depending on if it's a like a, a fine, nice square wave or if it's a, tri a triangle or sine wave. That's basically a sine wave can be approximated as a square wave, same for a triangle wave and they are slightly different, even though they have the same frequency. So I'm quite far into the project. I don't have the parts necessary here, but I know the theory of operation. So what we need is a comparator circuit. Basically, we need to have a carrier frequency like the one that we did with our uh, frequency generator. So we basically make a square wave. Uh, you could use a 555 timer for that. And then we modulate our audio signal uh, onto this. So with a comparator circuit, you can basically add the square wave and your audio signal, and then you get a different square wave. And on the other end, you would basically just use a low pass filter to convert that back and an amplifier to make it audible for your ears again. And that is basically audio encoded into a digital signal. <sighs> you also need some like knowledge about analog electronics that I don't have, but I know somebody who can tell you a lot about that. In our series DC2 Daylight, uh, basically, you get everything you need if you're interested in RF and stuff and like wireless transmission and things. And for me, that's a totally different world. But should I get into that? Let me know. 
So I kind of need your help on this one. Uh, should we even try to make this analog stuff work with audio? Or should we just like rip those modules out, go digitally, do it in 2.4 gigahertz or whatever, and make like a digital audio system because that's all things of the past and we don't need that anymore. Or is that really interesting for you and you like consider going into ham radio? I was approached a few times if I wouldn't like to make the amateur license and uh, I'm not sure about it yet. But if you know, let me know if that's a hobby to pursue or just an interesting thing to get into with electronics. As always, you can find all the files and schematics and whatever for the stuff we built on the Element 14 community and download it there for free. The schematic in this one didn't quite work out. I will also put there uh, a possible solution to get audio transmission with a comparator. So download that if you're interested. And also, I have a 3D file for a 3D printed insert so you can use these BNC connectors for antennas. Uh, if you would like to get that, it's also free on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me. Oh wait, but the antennas are a bit big.